I bought the cheapest 4K monitor I could find. Now, there's been overwhelming demand for budget-oriented content lately, presumably in light of the high graphics card prices. Saving money elsewhere in the budget can mean the difference between a 1050 Ti and something like a GTX 1070, and those two are worlds apart. So if you're interested in an affordable monitor for content creation or gaming or just the crispy desktop wallpapers, do what we did and buy something like this on sale for about 250 bucks. Hey, it's 4K. The Be Quiet Dark Bay 700 brings luxury and silence to the mainstream. Luxury thanks to subtle RGB integration, full case modularity, and even USB Type-C support. And silence thanks to three included Silent Wings 3 fans and sound damping foam all around. Click the link in this video's description for more details. Meet the Acer CV281HK. For short, we'll call it the CV1. Now, it's sporting a 28-inch 3840 by 2160 panel. It is the most spectacular looking thing on the market, but the price surely was. We paid about 250 US dollars for it and at our local Best Buy. Now, this admittedly was quite some time ago, actually around Black Friday. The deal was so good, we actually purchased two of them just on merit alone. Now, out of the box, I wasn't too impressed with the way it looked, at least physically. The bezels are pretty thick and ugly. They protrude from the display itself by nearly six and a half millimeters. That's thicker than some smartphones, by the way. And just when you think they couldn't get much worse, they also have a glossy texture, which means that they you know, attract fingerprints and they scratch easily. The entire profile, for that matter, isn't very slim. I kid you not, while the bezels are almost 6.35 millimeters thick, the depth of the monitor is about 6.35 centimeters. And from front to base, we're looking at just under 24 centimeters. So it's a pretty large monitor. Remember, it is a 28 inch panel. That's a diagonal uh, length there. But this, believe it or not, is where the negatives stop, actually. Starting from the structure and stand, the CB1 rotates a full 90 degrees for both portrait and landscape views, and is also swivel and height adjustable. It's one of the nicest integrated monitor stands I've used, to be completely honest. It's even got a cutout for cable management, so, you know, they're, they're really focusing on all the fine details here. The panel itself has several quality features for the price. For one, an integrated AC converter, which means no annoying power brick to deal with. Ports underneath include DVI-D, HDMI, and DisplayPort. Remember, you'll need DisplayPort 1.4 or two DVI-Ds or HDMI 2.0 for a true 4K picture here. cb ones also sporting a dedicated audio in jack as well as a headphone jack. I think the best part is that Acer actually includes cables for all three video ports, including DisplayPort which is pretty cool. These aren't cheap cables. You'd think that at this price point they would find every single place they could to save money, but they didn't with respect to cables. Now the CB1 also has built-in speakers, another cost-saving feature for GON for the sake of the consumer. Despite the lackluster lows and distorted highs at just two watts apiece, the Duo is actually a pretty great substitute for those awaiting a decent set of desktop speakers or headphones. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to mention about the CB1's physical characteristics, it's vase mountable so pairing up two or three of these things actually shouldn't be a problem at all and because they're so cheap you know it probably wouldn't break too many banks out there to buy two or three of them to have that duo or triple display. Now I'm moving over there because this angle is really awkward. All right, now on to my personal impressions of the panel. I will say first and foremost, the calibrations right out of the box are pretty sweet. Now remember that the camera's gonna incur a bit of distortion when it comes to the picture uh, quality, that replication that you're seeing uh, in this video is not going to be true to life. So the panel actually looks much better in person and I can't really show you how it looks via camera. So you're kind of gonna have to take my word for it here, but I'm gonna be very critical uh, just because I know that most of you are going to be as well when it comes to, hey, 250 to roughly $350 price tag. You expect this thing to fall short in a few areas, but I'm here to tell you that it really doesn't, and I, I tried to find any fault that I could. The first thing I noticed right out of the box was the color reproduction. It was spot on, so no calibration needed on my end. In fact, what you're looking at right now is like the normal that's the normal picture. I didn't actually do anything to it. Uh, this is what it should look like right out of the box. It will vary from unit to unit slightly, I expect, but I mean, as long as the quality control is decent on these monitors, they're gonna look pretty similar to one another. Uh, and this one looks spectacular. There is no warm or cool tint at all. I think the white balance is spot on. Contrast is decent, uh, especially given the fact that this is a TN panel. Now your viewing angles are gonna be pretty trash. That's typical of a cheaper TN panel. 
Uh, I would say anything within 30 degrees of center is going to be okay, but past 30 degrees you will see that color distortion uh, and you can definitely see it from above and below. So make sure that this monitor is at least eye level. Anything 10 or 20 degrees above or below your line of sight, that's a horizontal line of sight, is going to incur some degree of color distortion. Now if you want to know more about TN technology and how it differs from say IPS technology, then I invite you to check out this video right here. But in general, a liquid crystal in a twisted pneumatic TN display is slightly curved from top to bottom and then when you run a current through it it'll either untwist slightly or twist a bit more and that affects how light travels through the liquid crystal to either turn on or off that given pixel. Of course the LCDs are backlit so each pixel is basically controlling the amount of light that passes through the crystal from the backlight below. Now this technology generally sports a bit more overclocking headroom but in a 4k monitor it's not really gonna matter much. Look you got 3840 by 2160 pixels, multiply those two numbers together, and that's how many pixels there are packed into this display. So it does get increasingly difficult, uh, the, the higher the pixel count, to overclock a monitor. This one really didn't overclock much at all. I think I got like 62 or 63 hertz, which is basically undetectable from 60 hertz. It's not gonna matter much here, uh, but you do have a consistent 60 hertz refresh rate with this monitor, and it's good enough for 4K, I would say. I think if you're gonna invest in a 4K monitor anyway, you're more interested in the picture quality and clarity than you are the overall smoothness. If you want, you know, 144 hertz or 240 hertz, then you're gonna have to drop to something like 1440p or 1080p. Something else I was very impressed with was the on-screen display. There are several buttons down below that really aren't dedicated to any particular function. If you click them, it opens up a menu, and then each button changes, at least what it does, uh, based on the little pictures that you see above each of the buttons on the frame. Uh, it was actually very easy to navigate through. It didn't require any, you know, learning curve at all it's very straightforward and this is what I want to see in in all monitors you know buttons that aren't necessarily dedicated because it's hard to see the little pictures that are engraved on the frames at times if you just have you know the description of the button on the screen instead it makes things much easier to navigate through now if you're worried about backlight bleed don't I would only be concerned about that on IPS panels this one being a TN panel really doesn't have much of anything in the way of backlight bleed I would say there's a tiny glow all the way around the frame and that's just because it's you know it's not a very expensive panel so the panel terminates right at the ends of these plastic frames and that is where you see a bit of that light bleed through but it's really only detectable when you have a perfectly black screen displaying and when you're in a very dark room I actually had to boost my camera's ISO to like 1600 with an f3 aperture to even notice that there was a bleed there other than that I've got to say Paying 250 bucks for this was an absolute steal, and I, I really wish that they would drop the price consistently. I've been looking online recently, you know, it's been two or three months since Black Friday around when I purchased this, uh, and the prices have gone back up to around 350 bucks. And that's that's like average for this panel. I'd say $350, $400 is what I would set this price to MSRP, and that's usually what you'll find it at. But I recommend waiting, especially if you don't need a panel right now, wait for something like this to drop in price, maybe around a holiday, check your local Best Buy or Micro Center for this particular model or whatever newer model they have come out later, uh, and you might be able to find this for under 300 bucks. If so, buy two of them because you're not gonna regret it. The quality here is insane for what you're paying. Now, if you want this monitor or one like it, I invite you to check out the video description. I have Amazon and Newegg affiliate links uh, tied to products that, if they're not this one, are very close to this one uh, that should impress you for the money. I try to keep things, you know, around 400 bucks or below and in the 4K resolution if you're interested in something like that. I also have a few uh, 1080p panels and 1440p panels down there that I would personally recommend if you're looking for a higher refresh rate uh, monitor, which is, you know, those are the resolutions you want to look for if you want that. If you're going 4K, unless you want to spend, you know, thousands of dollars, you're going to stay around 60 hertz. That's just how it's going to be. So you have to weigh these out. You know, ask yourself if you prefer image clarity or if you prefer a faster image, you know, a higher refresh rate. It really comes down to the games you play and what you prefer overall. Let me know what you think about this monitor in the comments below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Thumbs down for the opposite. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. And stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for looking with us. This thing really does look good.